Hello everyone, Crash here, the Sartia Motorsports. So today we're going to take a look at the Thrustmaster TMX Pro and I'm going to give you my review of that as well as I'm going to let you know how I feel about it in comparison to the Thrustmaster TX and the TSPC Racer. Here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. First, I want to stop by saying that if you need any sort of custom t-shirts or polos designed after your favorite automotive manufacturer, or if you need any vinyls for your vehicles or your rig at all for whatever reason, definitely check out phantomgraphics.com. They can customize any sort of design that you desire. They have some funny designs, some more serious designs like this V logo for my CTS-V. Definitely check them out. Again, that's phantomgraphics.com. So right now I have them in order of their range. Right now the TSPC Racer is kind of top of their line and this is the Thrustmaster TX, unfortunately non-working anymore. And this is the what we're going to be looking at today, the Thrustmaster um, TMX. And this is specifically the TMX Pro because it comes with the T3PA pedal set. You can see the size differences in the bases from this one here, the TMX to the TX or the T300 is about the same minus this hump here and then you have the TSPC racer which is narrower than the TX or T300 by a little bit but a little bit taller um, for the most part when you mount it. The wheel in question today is quite a bit smaller I would say more in comparison to size of the Logitech G920 or G27, maybe a little bit bigger of a base, but not by much compared to those wheels. Although the wheel size is what you would expect on the T, uh, TX or T300. Um, it is a 11 inch or 28 centimeter wheel uh, that is non-removable. This is the add-on um, Alcantara 599XX Evo wheel which is a little bit bigger. This is the 30 centimeter wheel. And this is the stock wheel or uh, it's like an F1 or GT3 style rim that you get with the TSPC Racer. So right there you can kind of get a side by side comparison on what you're getting from the TMX all the way up through the range. All right, so the Thrustmaster TMX, just in its pure design, just laid out here in front of the other wheels, we're gonna kind of go over that real quick. So the wheelbase itself, like I said, kind of mimics the Thrustmaster TX in its design, except it's more closely related in size to the G920 or the G27 from Logitech. Um, maybe a little bit bigger still. I would say that the rim itself is plastic with rubber side grip extensions. is actually pretty smart for lower force feedback motors because, like my old experience, my, lot, uh, my Thrustmaster T100 that only had 270 degrees of rotation is probably the wheel that had the biggest impact on my sim racing career. Um, it only had 270 degrees of rotation, but the force feedback came through my hands very well because of this lightweight wheel. So this wheel reminds me of the T100 wheel big time, although that was only, I think it was only an eight inch wheel where this is an 11 inch, which you get stock on the T300 as well as the TX. Now the TX base wheel is also plastic in design with rubber side grip extensions. I would say this design is actually better because this mimics more of the general button box design that you get on most of these wheels. 
Um, I, di I really didn't like uh, the base Thrustmaster TX plastic wheel, um, as well as I love these paddle shifters a heck of a lot better. They're more online with the same type of paddle shifters that you get with um, some of the add-on wheels. Now I would say the 599XX Evo, although the paddle shifters look almost identical in their design, I mean they're like the same, um, the same shape, the same size, uh, the same black stamped metal uh, appearance. Um, the click feels a little bit different, uh, but really it's, if you don't have them side by side, you're not necessarily gonna notice. And what I think is actually attributing to that difference is probably the housing of the button box themselves. Because I mean, the click really, the positive force feedback behind it feels about the same, but you can kind of hear that there's sort of a hollow sound in the uh, button box itself, uh, which really isn't necessarily horrible or anything like that. I'm just trying to figure out what would be the difference, and I think it's more sound related than actual feel. Um, but the paddle shifters look and essentially almost feel the same as you get with most of the Thrustmaster add-on wheels. The button box is a similar design to most of Thrustmaster button boxes. Um, it is all in plastic and it's all in one piece with the wheel rim. Now the wheel rim is plastic as well like I just mentioned, but you'll notice on the add-on rims that you have a, and this goes from most Thrustmaster add-on rims, you have a brushed metal face that is then affixed to the Thrustmaster button boxes. Most people never remove them or separate them, but the Thrustmaster button boxes are plastic in their design. This here uh, seems to be of a, of a different sort of take on that where they kind of tried to mimic that design, but all in plastic. I'm fine with that at this price point. This price point, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, and I, I do like that they kind of stayed with the same design of their button boxes, because to me, it's very comfortable. It makes perfect sense uh, to have the shoulder buttons here where you could reach with your thumbs. And especially, you know, being of an adult size hand, it feels a lot more manlier instead of the Thrustmaster T100 that I had that was an extremely small rim and I felt like I was constantly encroaching my hands upon each other just to try to do anything. Uh, this feels more appropriate. I do kind of like how the Thrustmaster logo is in a, uh, it is painted but you have a silver finish there with uh, the Thrustmaster logo in black and if you look over here it says TMX in um, sort of a painted, uh, I would say that's a white painted font. And on the left side here, you have the Xbox button as well as a mode button that we're so used to. Now, minus the Manatino switch, you're probably not necessarily gonna lose any buttons because you also have your menu buttons here. And I believe that uh, is for the Xbox in, in particular. Uh, I don't own an Xbox myself, but um, that's where that can be used. And the D-pad feels identical to any of the other D-pads in the Thrustmaster line. Um, it's, it's just a D-pad. So from there, we're actually going to mount it to the rig and we're going to take a look at it further. Now, if you're wondering how we're going to mount it to the rig, um, well, what we're actually going to be using is the Rick Motec add-on plate. And this was supplied to me by my uh, good friend, Phantom, that is actually allowing me to borrow his wheel and pedal set just for this review. Um, this here he purchased to mount to his rig. Now, I actually didn't know that Rick Motec even makes this, to be honest with you. Uh, now, I was going to do this review mounted to the desk. Now, <laughs> I will say, just like any other Thrustmaster product, uh, it has the same table mount clamp that comes with the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer, TX, T300, and obviously now the TMX. That table clamp is not going to move this. And honestly, um, it would be kind of redundant to review the table clamp with this uh, setup because I have actually um, used it before when we had our first look with the Thrustmaster TX. I personally believe that you know once you actually clamp this down, 
it's not going to move at all because it is the same design that we had with the other three and I'm, I'm very confident in it. So we're gonna today take a look at something different and uh, the Rickmo Tech uh, mounting plate so that way we could get it on a proper rig and see how it performs there. This is the Thrustmaster TMX startup sequence. All right, so now that we have the wheel fully mounted to our motion rig, you're gonna notice that with the wheel off, well, it has power going to it, it already calibrated, but with us not in a title, there is quite a bit of gear noise and the wheel is quite a bit heavy. Um, you can hear it there. Now, just like the Thrustmaster TX, this can be mapped from 240 degrees rotation all the way to 900, which is awesome compared to the T100 I had that was only 240 degrees of rotation. Uh, I do feel that mounted to the rig using that Rickmotec base, um, it is of a good height. It still feels natural. It has a nice tilt back. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like it's wrong to mount this to a rig when you're using that plate. It feels like any other wheel that I have used on this rig. Uh, and it feels appropriate. So it's going to be exciting. We're gonna get right now into Assetto Corsa and we're gonna test this out and I'm gonna let you know exactly what I think. All right, so we're in the Porsche Cayman GT4 at the Highland Short. The reason why I'm testing this track now is we have um, bumped up the force feedback to 87%, which I don't think is unreasonable, but this track here has cobblestones and a, it's quite a drastic change in road feel going from the normal tarmac to the cobblestones. So I just want to see how it changes as we uh, take some laps here. I like how tight the wheel gets so you can kind of feel the front tires ripping. There's no appreciable dead zone on center. I feel like I'm having kind of read the whole way and look at that. Beautiful force feedback through the wheel of the cobblestones. Feels appropriate. I'm really enjoying just how smooth and quick the turn in this wheel really is too. There's a section up here that I really notice the front end losing grip and it's really nice to feel. And it's right here when I'm hard braking for this right hander. Overall, I gotta say, I'm impressed with this wheel. If, you, uh, if you're if you looking for a wheel to kind of just see if you might like sim racing for the price, I don't, I don't know if you could get any better. It's smoother in my opinion, uh, as far as what I remember to the Logitech G27 and G920, which is just helical mesh gears. Um, Look at that, I could feel it losing grip there in the front end, that's awesome. This is truly a joy. I mean, the only thing is that I will knock it on, and it's to be expected, it really is, is the rim being plastic with these rubber side grip extensions. It's making my hands really sweaty, and uh, the rim itself feels a little bit thinner than most of their add-on wheels. Uh, but really, I mean, if you wear gloves, easily remedied. Uh, you won't even notice the difference. So in the end, what do I think about the Thrustmaster TMX Pro? Uh, especially someone who came from uh, the T100, which is long gone, they don't make it anymore. This is kind of its replacement, not kind of, I think it is its replacement, but came from the T100 all the way up to now the TSPC Racer. How do I feel about this product? Well, all in all, I do gotta say, for the price, this is absolutely awesome. Uh, I believe I probably 
would have prolonged my upgrade if I would have started with this wheel before going to the uh, Thrustmaster TX or you know T300 as a similar wheel. Probably would have prolonged it because my main gripe with the T100 was the size of the rim, which is this is the stock size of um, the Thrustmaster TX or the T300 rim. It's maybe not as thick as those rims, but it is a stock diameter and the T100 was quite small. I think that was only a nine inch rim if I remember correctly. Another thing is this has 900 degrees of rotation, whereas that was only 240. Um, thirdly, the paddle shifters are great. They're not little plastic switches. Uh, this is actually better paddle shifters than what comes stock on my uh, 2013 Cadillac CTS-V. These are actually decent paddles. And then in this TMX Pro configuration, what we're looking at here, the pedals are actually pretty darn good. I really like these T3PA pedals. Um, I can kind of see what everyone's talking about as far as the conical brake mod and just how how smooth the pedals are. Although they're completely constructed of plastic, uh, they have a metal spring underneath that is lubricated and with some grease on it. And it just feels, it doesn't feel plasticky. Uh, I was expecting the arms to feel very plasticky and I was expecting to feel maybe a little bit of grinding from the metal spring on the plastic. But all in all, this feels like a quality piece. The force feedback on this can be quite strong. You do feel some of the gearing in it um, especially when the force feedback gets up there a little bit. And like I said before, in um, situations of drifting, it is slow to respond in the counter steer. So you're not going to want this wheel um, unless you turn force feedback off. I did not try that, but you're not going to necessarily want this wheel for drifting scenarios. And lastly, because it is a plastic rim with rubber side grip extensions, it does make your hands a bit sweaty. So I definitely recommend some gloves and you could also feel uh, the screw mounting holes that you know kind of piece the two sides of the wheels together uh, through the rubber gr side grips extensions. Um, honestly, while I was racing, I didn't notice it. Literally, I just noticed it now while I was talking and I was feeling my hands along the back. But when you grip the wheel, uh, your hand doesn't really get annoyed or you don't really feel those holes, but they are there. So I'm, I have to tell you. Um, so all in all, I do gotta say for this price point, Thrustmaster hit it way out of the park. Uh, this is a great entry wheel and I think it will serve people longer durations before they feel like they need an upgrade. And what that does for Thrustmaster, it kind of like pushes them towards the accessories like the TH8A, which was not necessarily an option for me um, without getting the USB cable when I had my uh, Thrustmaster T100. So hopefully this helps you in your buying decision. Uh, I don't feel this is a replacement for a Thrustmaster TX or TSPC racer. If you are looking budget minded, what can you get to get you into it and you want to get away from the controller or you know console racing and you have a decent enough PC for uh, PC sim racing, I recommend this. Just make sure that you buy within your means and you buy at a level that you think is going to make you happy for a while because, and I just want to segue into this, you can spend more by spending less initially. Like I did, I had the T100 and I knew I was going to want more. And instead of buying the TX or the T300 initially, like I thought I I'm probably should have, um, I ended up buying them anyway and selling my T100 used, which is less than new. Uh, even though these tend to hold their value pretty well, uh, surprisingly, but just make sure if you're going to buy the TMX or think about how much time you're actually going to put into sim racing. Think about honestly how much you want to spend and make sure that if you're buying this, you're comfortable with having it for a while because it probably will serve you for a few years without any issues. Um, don't buy it with the, with the notion of I may upgrade if I like this because you're probably going to like this and then you're gonna sell this used probably at a discount from what you bought it for and now you're buying a TX T300 TSPC racer which would have saved you money in the long run. So, tip from uh, someone that actually fell into that trap myself. So I'm Crash, this is RTA Motorsports. Definitely subscribe, hit that like button. It definitely helps me out greatly more than you know. And as usual, see you all next time.